it's not good. It's not good. What's it doing? What in the world happened here? That piston doesn't look too bad. It's used. It's got some miles on it. This one is hammered and the cylinder looked bad. In a multi-cylinder engine, even with just two cylinders, a failed piston is probably first noticed by poor power, a low or poor idle. You may start the engine and it, it may be a little fussy to start. You may have to give it some throttle and you may have to sustain some throttle, keep it running. And you may find that it won't reach top RPM. A snowmobile engine should run, oh, in the neighborhood of 8,000 RPM. If you're only getting 75, maybe 7,800 RPM, that could be a symptom. It's not the only thing that can cause that issue though. So the best thing you can do, find out if you've got a bad piston in your motor, check the compression. There are a couple of quick ways to do that. The redneck check is to pull the spark plugs out of both holes. Put your thumb or your finger over one hole while you have somebody else pull the rip cord. And then you do the same thing on the other cylinder. And if it feels different, that's a pretty good indicator. If, if they're the same, then you may just have some normal wear. A failure like this, though, is more likely to happen on one side or the other first. So if you don't get enough pressure to, to push your thumb off the top of the spark plug hole, that's your first indicator. Or if you can't quite tell if the compression between the two cylinders is different, you need to get out a uh, compression gauge. And then if the difference between the two holes is sizable, then the odds are high that you've got an issue. I had 100 and 130. I had only about 90 on the failed side. In a way, it's remarkable that I had even that much. I guess that's because the bottom ring is still intact. Exciting. It's like Christmas. I don't know. There's just something about perfect cross hatching in a freshly plated cylinder. That's pretty exciting. Hey, Dad. Yo. You should just come check it out. Like, Why don't so you scratch. wheel that thing in here so it's not so cold? With the Polaris, this is easily done in the chassis. Yes, you can rebuild the top end of a Polaris engine in the chassis and without removing all of the bulkheads and steering shafts and plastic and i mean it's really quite simple if you're doing this on a skidoo good luck that's about the best i can say every time i've done a skidoo i've had to pull the engine out and so it's a much bigger job what i have to do here is get the the rings collapsed with one hand and position the cylinder with the other to get it into place. The shape of the cylinder facilitates some fingers to the side and it's on over the rings. Now on both cylinders, we'll kind of let that slide down into place. Now if we wanted to just do a quick little check, we could turn the engine a little bit, watch the pistons go up and down, make sure that's a smooth action. It is. What I'm going to do next is tighten up the fuel rail only because if there is any complication in uh, in the injectors then there's an outside chance the cylinder might have to come back off so before putting those bolts on for the cylinder i'm going to put on the, the rail mount the rail there's an official uh, torque order on this stuff um, but, but it, frankly, in this case, there are eight bolts. And so the pattern is the same. You start in the middle, go from one side to the other, and then work your way out from the middle, alternating from one side to the other. And, and I like to go in, in little amounts. So I'll tighten it some but not all the way on my first pass on each bolt and then go back through and hit it again later. I have a buddy who runs a Skidoo dealership and he says the top end can be done with the engine in the sled. 
but I have not been able to do that successfully. I, I've had to pull the engine out on a skidoo when I've done it, or I, I'm exaggerating a little bit. You could do it in the, in the belly, but everything else has to be pulled off. And so the engine's practically out, and at that point I'd rather just pull it out and do it on the bench for convenience sake than anything. So in that regard, as great as the skidoo stuff is, I actually quite like their machines and they're, they're innovative and uh, they're fun to ride, but boy, working on one's enough to make you wanna do bad things to yourself. So, I mean, if you've ever tried to change the spark plug on a skidoo out on the trail, you know what I'm talking about. You just about have to perform open heart surgery for a minor operation. It's not comfortable. Whereas on a Polaris, uh, all it takes is reaching in with the tool that comes on the snowmobile and, uh, and swapping them out. 